All right, hi guys. Good to see you all again. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about a kind of crazy experience I had when I went on a 10 day Vipassana meditation retreat. Um, so I'm gonna cut right to it. In the next clip, you'll see me actually arriving at the retreat and then um, I'll sum up for you at the end how it all went for me. So check this out now and I'll see you in a bit. Hi guys, I just wanted to film this short video because I've just driven an hour out into the countryside to near Hereford um, for a 10 day silent Vipassana meditation retreat. Now this is partly for my own personal development and partly as a kind of experimentation into how Vipassana meditation can be beneficial to people who are experiencing social anxiety and really what effect a meditation retreat like this will have on me and how that might be useful for anyone that's suffering with SAD. Now I've heard various reports about this place. It's called the Dharma Dipa Center. Um, I had a friend who did it who said there was no problem and he found the silence over 10 days very easy. I just spoke to my jiu-jitsu instructor before I left who's quite an experienced meditator and he said it was the most hardcore training he's ever done. So right now I'm going into this with kind of um, slightly mixed feelings. I don't really know what to expect. I imagine it's going to be pretty intense and quite hardcore doing 10 days in total silence and the itinerary is like eight hours of meditation per day almost. So I'm sat here in the car park. It's 4.30. Registration ends at 5. I'm going to go in now. And the next time you see me, I will have completed the 10-day silent meditation course, uh, meditation course, and I'll be reporting back on how it went then. So, fingers crossed, I'll see you guys all on the other side. So first of all, I thought it'd be useful if I just give you a little bit of information about the logistics of the retreat that I went on. As I said, it's a 10-day Vipassana meditation retreat. Vipassana means insight. It's the kind of meditation that the Buddha used to attain um, Buddhahood or reach Nirvana. And it just means focusing on a single thing. There's no incense, there's no bells or whistles um, or chanting or anything like that. It's meditation that is stripped down right to its very essence and to its very core. And it's totally non-religious. You don't have to be Buddhist. When I went to the center, uh, there was no Buddhist or religious iconography anywhere is a totally secular practice and you just focus on the breathing. So I don't want to give the content of the whole course away. If you want more information about the course, where I went and who I did it with, I will tell you about that. But they're an international organization. It's totally free. As I say, they practice Vipassana meditation and it was a 10 day retreat. When you arrive, you lock your phone and your valuables in a locker and then you have an introductory talk and after that you maintain total silence. Now for me this was one of the greatest things okay I'm going to talk about the benefits of the course and what it did for me and I think the first benefit number one was that it got me off my phone for 10 days it was amazing at first I felt like I was in prison but after a couple of days I started to feel like I was free and everybody who was outside and was tied to their phones was in prison. So that was the first thing. It was a digital detox. It cut me off from um, the outside world and just gave me a chance to completely get into my own mind, my own body and have total silence. And that was amazing, okay? And when I came back into the quote unquote real world, I also kept that practice of locking my phone away and even now I check it much, much less. So it broke that dependency that I had on technology and on my phone. Number two, what it did for me is that I was able to identify different parts of my mind when they were thinking. There was like a higher part of my mind which would have higher level thoughts and stuff like that. And then I could actually identify my kind of monkey mind which was like, oh, who's in the shower before me? I want lunch, let's jump up, I wanna get off this cushion. My back's hurting, you know, screw this, I hate this. And you could almost feel and identify these different parts of the brain that were speaking. That was pretty amazing in itself, but it's helped me a lot in my everyday life 
to be able then to have a distance between myself and my thoughts and especially if I have anxiety or have some anxious thoughts it gives me this really important buffer or distance where I can see oh that's my monkey mind throwing up an anxious thought I don't need to I don't need to engage with that it's just a signal it's just him going mad you know it's just the, the monkey playing up I don't have to engage with that so it gives you this kind of objectivity so the second benefit is that it helps you to identify how your mind works and it gives you distance you're not just completely thrown about by your own thoughts you're not completely tied up into it you can actually step back and you actually see that and number three the main benefit that it gave me was it gave me a great deal of productivity okay and discipline and control and quiet of the mind when I came back I was doing an hour meditation in the morning and an hour meditation in the evening while you're in the center doing the retreat it's totally silent for 10 days and you're doing like up to seven or eight hours of meditation per day admittedly not all of that is meditation sometimes your mind is just wondering but when you get out of there to come home and do an hour in the morning hour in the evening is like nothing okay but full disclosure I'm not a saint I'll be totally honest with you my practice has changed a lot there have been times when I haven't done any there have times when I've done you know the full hour and you know in the morning and at night but what I'm doing more often than not and what I'm aiming for is just 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes at night and I find that that has a really good impact but from doing this what I found is whereas before my mind was all over the place I could just do one task focus on that finish it move along the next task do that finish it the next task finish it and my productivity went through the roof my sleep quality was improved a lot my mind was a lot quieter okay so this sounds great but you might think how does it apply to social anxiety well if you're more productive I generally feel a lot happier I'm achieving you know I have greater self-efficacy my self-esteem goes up because I can achieve the goals that I set myself if I'm sleeping well my overall well-being my hormones are more balanced my neurotransmitters are replenished and my mood is generally better and my social anxiety goes down okay and um, thirdly what else did I say productivity sleep and then peace of mind obviously when I'm out on the street and I'm in the supermarket and I'm dealing with people when your brain is in like theta waves or you know a, a deeper state of calm rather than buzzing around in alpha wave or whatever it is then of course your anxiety is generally lower so I would say that this 10 day meditation retreat was an amazing experience it's difficult you know it's it might not be for everybody but I didn't find the silence difficult it was lovely to get off my phone um, if you've got an inclination or an interest in meditation and you know you you would like to try and apply this and see how it could help you with your social anxiety I would totally recommend it hit me up in the comments below if you want more information or you want to know the organization that I did it with as I say it was free I just gave them a, a voluntary contribution but it was an amazing experience and it has left lasting changes and it really also it grounded me in the practice and it helps me to then set up um, a solid practice myself and it was the first time that I really learned how to do meditation properly so I would say before Headspace, before using an app or going to any of your local groups, this is actually the best place to start. I wish I had started with this um, when I was 19, you know, like 15, 16 years ago. Uh, I think it's a great, it's a difficult starting point, but it's a great starting point. So if you're interested, hit me up in the comments below. Um, I can hook you up with the information and yeah, give it a go.